Okay. So let's get, let me pull mine up again. Our first question for chapter 10 is going to be us. And went to chapter nine. One second. Here it is. It asks us why did the Japanese attack Pearl Harbor according to map? So that lets us know that in this chapter, Danny's going to run into somebody he knows, right? That makes me feel good because he's been alone on this journey towards the hospital and it's a scary one, wasn't it? So he's going to run into somebody he knows. That makes me feel a little bit better about him. But it also makes me worried. I'm feeling worried because he doesn't really like this person, does he? So let's see how they come to meet each other at this time, at this kind of scary time. Because remember, I'm really wild chapter. It was really wild. Okay, next question. You're giving, you're going to be answering why is, what was Mac's answer? What did Mac say was the reason that the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor? Next question asks, why wasn't America prepared for the Japanese attack? Now we know we weren't ready. Our country, the American country, the United States was not ready for this attack. And in chapter 10, it's going to tell us why. Why? What is the reason we weren't ready? Did we, were, maybe Japanese wasn't even our enemy and we would have never expected it? Maybe we just didn't have many ships and weapons? We're not sure, but it's going to tell you in the chapter and we'll get to answer that. Remember to use your evidence. You guys have been doing a really, really good job with those. Super proud. The next question asks, well, it tells you to describe the scene Danny observed as Hickam came into view. Observed means what he saw, what he was watching and listening out for. What did he see? I want you to use your senses there. What did he see? What did he hear? Maybe there was a smell in the air. What did he smell? I don't think he'd be tasting something right now, so maybe not taste. So use the senses to describe what the scene was. The scene means what is out there in the open. Forest. What is he seeing? What's right there in front of him? It's asking for the hiccup. So that means he's looking or he's coming into the hospital at this point. He, he can see it. Uh, what is his view? What is he seeing right there? Good morning, Diego. Right now we are going over our questions. So I'm going to go ahead and put you on mute. If you need to come off mute, raise your hand, okay? Again, so we're going over our chapter 10 questions. That one we were just talking about tells you to describe the scene Danny observed. Again, you're just describing what's going on what is he seeing what is he hearing as he's starting to see the hospital come into view and those are the only question that's three three questions for chapter 10. so now that we have those let's get to reading yes thumbs up if we're ready hear the story hear the chapter All right, we're going to hear chapter 10 now. Before we go into chapter 10, let me remind you what happened right at the end of chapter 9. So remember, chapter 9 was kind of wild, right? And at the very end of chapter 9, it said that right behind Danny was a giant, enormous explosion. And it was so big, it's, Danny felt like if the floor just burst it up. So that probably means he got thrown. That's crazy. He was thrown so hard, the explosion was so hard, he smashed his head into the sand. And then he couldn't see anything at all. I'm going to raise my hand real quick because right there, he couldn't see anything at all. I'm going to be honest. When I finished reading that last time, I was scared. Why can't he see? What happened to him? 
who else felt that way? Right? I'm really worried. So let's jump right into chapter 10 to see if he's okay. Chapter 10, 8.45 a.m. So all of this happened really early, right? Let's start. Danny wasn't dead. Oh, thank goodness, right? Danny wasn't dead. His head felt like it had been split into two. His hands and knees throbbed. So what that means is, you know, if you fall down and like you still feel it, that's what's happening. He was, he fell, he was thrown so hard, he fell face forward, face into the sand, right? And his hands and knees are throbbing from how hard he fell. His mind swirled. It's probably really dizzy right now. His mouth was filled with sand and blood. He'd bitten his tongue. His ears were ringing, but he was all in one piece. He had no idea how much time had passed since that plane appeared. The plane was gone now. The attack seemed to be over. As his mind cleared, he managed to sit up. Over the harbor, one of the battleships was a ball of fire. That was the huge explosion. An entire battleship had been blown apart. That's what had knocked him down. Danny finally struggled to his feet and staggered across the beach toward the road. He saw a car parked at the edge of the beach, the front end partially hidden in a prickly bush. Partially means kind of, so only part of it was like hiding in the bush. It was covered with bullet holes. The back window was shattered. Not only taught Danny and Finn how to drive, he shared a secret for starting a car engine without a key. I'm gonna stop right there. That is called hot wiring. When your key doesn't work or people who steal cars, they hot wire a car. That means they don't have the key, so they want to turn it on. What you do is unplug a bunch of wires and like there's an electricity spark and then the car. So Earl, remember that leader of the gang had taught them how to drive and they're way too young to drive. And he also taught them how to start a car that maybe wasn't theirs. Ugh tricky business they were doing with him back in New York City. So Danny's thinking of taking this car, right? A faster way to get to mom, maybe? Let's keep reading. But as Danny got closer to the car, a man's face appeared through the shattered driver's window. Hey, kid, he called. You okay? Danny couldn't believe his eyes. It was his mother's friend, Mac. Dan! Max said, is that really you? Are you okay? Were you hit? I'm okay, Danny said. Where is your mother? Mac asked. She's at the hospital, Danny said, his voice shaky. At the base. I think it was hit. I need to get there. Mac looked nothing like a fancy Sutton Place man trying to impress Danny's mother. His expression was fierce and determined. Let's go, he said. That's where I'm headed. Let's go, he said. That's where I'm heading. You come with me. We'll find her. When Danny got into the car, he noticed blood splattered on the doors. Max's arm was bleeding really badly. You're hurt. Danny said. Mac glanced at his arm. I got grazed by a bullet. I've had worse. So to him, these shots on his arm that are bleeding really badly, they're nothing. He's fine. He's had worse. Remember, he's in the army. He pulled the car up onto the road and they drove off. They caught us by surprise, Mac said. 
The Japanese blindsided us. The word blindsided mean it came out of nowhere. So he's describing the, the Japanese attack as super unexpected. It came out of nowhere. America didn't see them coming, right? Let's keep reading. Why? Danny said. To knock out our ships and bombers, Max said. To cripple our entire Pacific fleet. That means to destroy everybody that's in the Pacific Ocean where they at. All the armies, supplies, and boats. The Japanese wanted to take them all out. That way they can take over whatever they want in the Pacific. China, the Philippines, Korea. Japan is a small country, but they want to be powerful. So they need more land. So they're taking over other countries, just like Hitler has been doing in Europe. And now we won't be able to stop them. But didn't we know they would do this? Danny said, shouldn't we have known? Shouldn't we have seen them coming? Some people talked about it, Max said, but nobody thought they could pull it off. Nobody thought they would actually do this. Mac looked at Danny. I'll tell you what, he said. The Japanese made a mistake, a big mistake. They have no idea what they've started. This country is going to rise up and crush them. You'll see. And what about Hitler? Danny said. Him too, Max said. Max sounded so sure. And Danny wanted to believe him. But now he was thinking about Mrs. Mills' map stretched across the classroom wall. How could America fight two wars on opposite sides of the world? How could America fight Hitler and Japan at the same time? As Hickam came into view, here it is. Remember the question asked about when Hickam came into view. As Hickam came into view, Danny could see smoke and flames rising from the base. Max swore under his breath. Swore means he, he was saying bad words, right? So right when he saw that fly, fire and flames at the hospital, he started saying some bad things under his breath, so to himself. Max swore under his breath. They pulled up to the gate, which was blocked by a smashed car, still smoldering. That means it's still on fire. Let's go, Mac said, opening his door. Danny followed Mac around the burning car and toward the gates at the base. Ahead, the base reminded Danny of a photo he'd seen in Life magazine of a town that had been hit by a tornado. There was wreckage everywhere. Twisted metal all over the ground, shattered glass, pieces of burnt wood. He stepped over a tattered hat. That means somebody's hat was there tattered, all ripped up. He wondered what had happened to the man who was wearing it. Some of the buildings had been destroyed. Two were still burning. The air was hard to breathe. It smelled like burned rubber and plastic. And everywhere he looked, Danny saw wrecked planes. Some were cut right in half. Two armed guards stood at the gate. They both saluted when they saw Mac and then they both started talking at once. We were hit bad, sir. We've lost about a dozen men, sir. About a hundred are wounded. That means they're hurt, a hundred. They destroyed the barracks and the mess hall. Two hangars are gone. Hangars are where the planes stay, like the garage for the planes. Two of them are gone. Mac listened closely to the rush of information. Finally, he held up his hand to quiet the men. Did we get any planes into the sky? Mac asked. No, sir. Hospital okay? Mac said, reading Danny's mind. Hospital is fine, sir. No hits. They're treating the wounded. Danny closed his eyes with relief. 
meaning he's so happy, right? The hospital wasn't hit. That means Ma is probably safe. He feels so good right now. Danny closed his eyes with relief. And then he heard a ferocious roar. Another wave of Japanese bomber planes roared out of the sky, whistling through the smoke right over their heads. Bombs started pouring down. And that's it. That's chapter 10. They left us right at a big important part again. I wonder what's gonna happen in chapter 11. All right, so now we are on mute. I want you to raise your hand if you have something to say about this chapter. How do you feel? What are you thinking? All right, Sophia, let me get you off mute. Or, okay, you get yourself off mute. I don't know how to do it. Go ahead, Sophia. Is, is there an end to chapter 10? No, not today. Today there is no exit ticket. That'll be tomorrow. So today you're just doing your packet. Yes. Okay. I'm going to mute you again, Sophia, and let me get Diego now. Go ahead, Diego. Unmute yourself. Uh, uh, I think that uh, they're going to do a little war, like Japanese planes are going to come again. Thanks. That's exactly what it sounded, right? The more planes were in the sky. I think they're about to do all that bombing all over again. Another wave. That, that's wild. Any Anybody else with a question or something to say about the chapter? Is it like is it like important that that we like... Say good morning. Good morning, Miss. Is it like important if... If like um, if like there's a test, because I usually do it together with my brother because I don't know the answers. Actually, I don't have the book, but I listen to you. Um. Pero empezaste tarde. Yeah, and I, but I, by paying attention um late, so it's kind yeah, of okay. like um, I recorded I recorded all the reading from the beginning. So once we hang up here later, it's going to save. And if you want to watch it again from the beginning, it'll be there. It'll save. Thank you, Miss. You're welcome. Good morning. Is that a, you have to go to the restroom, Diego? <laughs> OK, so if you if you were paying close attention, they it the chapter told us exact go ahead Diego you're fine um the chapter told us exactly what the question said to describe the scene as he goes to Hickam remember I said right at that point it said so the view of Hickam came into view right that's exactly what the question's asking so I remember it told us what he saw and it did tell us about some smells that were in the air so when this is over, if you want to go back and watch the, the reading again, it's going to be saved on the on the page where we put our posts. So you can go back and listen to that again. Go ahead, Marvin. Let me. Yeah, go ahead. Um, can you read it again? Because my mom is telling me. Oh, oh, está ya, uh... Like, could we like, could I read it again? Or, oh, or, I mean, could you read it I... again? Or can you do like a the this video, the one we are on right now, it's gonna save on on the page, and when it's done, it's gonna be there, and you can click and watch the whole thing again with us all here. It's gonna again at the end. Go ahead, Sophia. This book made me feel scared. Because some of the chapters are scary. I, I appreciate you telling me how you feel about this book. Yeah, this book um, also, I agree with you. It makes me feel a little bit worried sometimes because remember, Danny's just a kid. But um, it's exciting. I think it's exciting because especially right now, 
a new wave is happening. So what what's going to happen in chapter 11? I'm super excited. Where are you at? Go ahead, Diego. Thank you for raising your hand. No, I I this book made me think that it was like interest just interesting. Does it say or I uh something? Yes, Diego, thank you. This book does it also made me feel very interested in learning more about Pearl Harbor because remember Pearl Harbor really happened. This character, Danny, is he's fictional, he's made up, but the event, the Pearl Harbor, was real. Yes, go ahead, Marvin. My mom doesn't let me hear bad words in the book, neither in the video, and neither in stuff of plushy. so I don't know about the book. It's kind of scary. Yes, it is. Thank you for letting me know about your rules in your house. Yes, luckily there are no bad words in this book, um, but it is a little bit exciting. So some parts may make you feel scared, but remember, it's just a fictional character, so it's it's not real. It's imaginary. But the Pearl Harbor was real. Yes, go ahead, Christopher. I know there was a new character. And what time does it start? Just turn it uh, on. And the new character? Yeah. The in in today's yeah. chapter? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in today's chapter there was a new character. Yes, they named Mac. Um, so remember Mac is mom's is Ma's friend that Danny didn't really like. Um, and he shows up again in this chapter. He comes out of nowhere. Maybe he, he was there getting attacked too. What time did the next chapter start? Uh, we already read the chapter right now, but it is being recorded. So if you missed some of it, when we hang up today, this recording that we're doing right now, it's going to save onto the, our page. So you can click it again and watch it again if you need to. So like what time does the other, like what time do we start the video again? Like at another day? Oh, another day. It's going to be at this time at 10 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We do the chapter tomorrow. We do do this class again, but we are not going to do a live. We are just going to do one exit ticket on this chapter 10. So we're not doing a new one tomorrow, just an exit ticket. So we'll do another live next Tuesday. OK. okay yes, Sophia, thank you. My DS is back. Bad words that I can't say. No kids could say the bad words grown ups could say. So yeah, no, I'm no. from Korea that lives all the way to from San to my dear lives in San Antonio and sometimes she comes to um Edinburgh. She owes has her dog Wendy and sometimes when we when she stays well when I was six when I was five, I remember she, that Aunt Sophia. Had, you remember you mentioned she visited last time. Now I'm gonna stop you real quick. Remember the rules of our of our call. Please keep our our conversations about chapter ten. Thank you for sharing about your aunt, though. Um, before before we have another question about chapter ten, I do want to say congratulations, Christopher. I do see your Word Master shirt, and I saw Mrs. Cantu's post about. Your accomplishments, great job. I'm so proud of you. And I did see Marvin's post about becoming uh, a math genius. I'm, so congratulations to you too, Marvin. Thank you. You're welcome. Great job, boys. Great job, Christopher. You too. Thank you. Okay, do we have any more questions about chapter 10? I wonder why the the thing is scary, and I and I also wonder why you see bad words. Like it's a, it's supposed to be a like a a book uh like books don't actually say bad words. They just yeah. Say like, yes, I just want to make it clear that um they did not say bad words in the book, but it said that Max swore under his breath. So yes, that means remember he's a grown man, 
and he saw all these bad things happening. So yeah, he probably said something to himself that he wasn't supposed to, but it doesn't say what he said in the book. It just tells us that he was probably feeling really angry at that time. Okay. Now today, th yes, thank you for those questions on chapter 10. It was a really good one. Now I'm so excited about chapter 11. I'm, I'm, there's something, it's a wild one again, right? Just like chapter nine. Um, remember today, your assignment is only to do the packet question. There's only three questions you have to do today, and that's it. Yes, Diego. Well, I'm already eight. Did you know that already? What was that? He's already a math. Did you know that I was already? No, yes. I'm already eight. Oh. <laughs> and I'm. Um, all righty well thank you for listening to chapter 10 and for talking about those questions and and your thoughts with me this is exactly what we'll do again next tuesday for chapter 11 and so again there's no exit ticket today that will be tomorrow today you're just doing those three packet questions in complete sentences with evidence you're doing a really good job with that so far so we can go ahead and end the call now. One big internet high five before we go. Everybody high five. High five, high five. Big internet high five. Miss. All right. Miss. Okay, so go ahead. We're going to end the call now. I need you to press the hang up button or else you're going to be on by yourself. Miss. Bye. Miss Bye. Bye-bye. Miss. 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 I want to show you my uh, pictures I drew when I first got this. So I'm very good at drawing um, tails. Press the, the red hang-up button. You'll, you'll be on by yourself. Press the red hang-up button. Okay. See you. Hi, Nick. Hi. There you go.